Welcome back, guys. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. It's July 6, 2011. This is the final segment. I've been ranting pretty much the whole show. And I'm just fired up today. I'm tired of just tired of seeing the, the fascism, you know, and it's not creeping anymore. It's, you know, in like fifth gear headed for overdrive. It's ridiculous. You got people. You, you got these people that are willing to sell their souls to Satan, for lack of a better term. And then you don't have to believe in Christianity or anything to understand what I mean about that. Whatever your evilness is in your religion, you know that's who they sold their soul, their soul to. Then, you know, if you believe in star aliens and people from reptiles from you know another dimension, that's fine. Then they, that's who they sold out to. But whoever your your ultimate evil entity is, these people have sold out. You know, like I said, my. Uh, my experience with a, a TSA moron, my wife and I were at Winn-Dixie, and this guy's bagging groceries, and I have Homeland Security t-shirt from when I used to be in the Coast Guard. This Coast Guard's part of Homeland Security, and I happened to be wearing one of my Homeland Security shirts, and he saw it, and he started talking to me like we were buddies. And he was bragging how he worked for TSA. And Now, this guy's only job at Winn-Dixie, because I asked him, is bagging groceries. He doesn't even – he's not even trusted to stock the shelves or you know, drive the little push cart, the little electronic hand cart with the pallets and stuff on it. Or even – he's not even trusted. Maybe, maybe they let him go get carts once in a while, but he didn't even say that he was the cart guy. The only thing he did was bounce from register to register to register and bag groceries. So this, something that they usually reserved for the mentally handicapped or the very old – that have to work because of people like Bernie Madoff. No, this guy was probably in his late 30s, early 40s. Um, I'm willing to bet if he didn't live with his parents, he lived in like a studio apartment. He was probably about 45 or 50 pounds overweight, big old fat gut, and just this greasy dirt bag, and he was bragging how he was the one that gets to touch people and grope people. And I just looked at him. And I didn't even go off on him and say, oh, you're a scumbag, blah, 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 blah. I just looked at him because he was looking at me like I was his, his homie. So I, instead of being like a typical someone that wasn't like citizen, civilian, whatever, he would look at that like, oh, you, you don't understand. So he thought I was from Homeland Security. So I gave him the stink eye and I just shook my head at him. And he was like – and it, it, it shut him up. Mid sentence, and he just looked at me like, "Huh?" And I just, I just looked at him, and shook my head like, "You sad, sad loser." And I grabbed my bags and I walked out because I said more with the look and with the shake of the head than I needed to with creating a scene. And even my wife picked up on it and she laughed at the guy as we walked away. I mean, that's how pathetic they can't get good people. They can't get somebody that maybe went to college to be a TSA agent anymore. You know, when I was first got out of the military in the end of 2003 it was different the TSA agents a lot of them were ex-military guys retired cops people that cared I mean they were TSA security was still a pain in the butt but they weren't doing the stuff they're doing now the people that they got doing this stuff now are pretty much completely new people and it's already been you know exposed that they were firing people left and right People that got fired from TSA came out and said, hey, look, I got fired because I said I objected to patting people down and visibly groping people. So they fired me. It's been happening all over the place. There are people in society that are sellout scumbags, and they will – those are the people that get hired. Those are the people that are attracted to jobs like that. Though They will – the DHS and TSA will hire these people. Just because you and the rest of society thinks that these people are scumbags, those are, like, those are like the perfect candidates for government. A lot of times they put people – I saw a woman that uh, had a job with DHS. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what her job was, but she was driving around in a DHS truck and everything. And I, I got to chat her up for a minute, and somebody I know knows her. And after she left, they told me she got that job. And one of the reasons well, – I should say how she got that job was one of the reasons was she was on welfare for so long. 
she kept applying and applying and applying and applying for government jobs. And finally, one day, DHS just hired her. And this is happening a lot. They're getting people that have been on welfare forever. And when I say welfare, I don't mean because of the economy now. I mean people that sat on their rear ends for the past 15 years on welfare, okay, and did nothing and contributed nothing to society. People that are fat and lazy and losers, the kind of people that cut you off in traffic and don't even bother to use a blinker. They cause accidents. They don't care. Those kind of people. We all know who I'm talking about, okay? And they come, they, they come in every color, race, creed, religion, doesn't matter. They're the losers of you know, society, the, the scum that floats to the bottom. Well, that's who these people hire. That's who they're hiring to do these jobs because nobody else in society would do that. No, no half-wit thinking person would even do that. I, mean, I know mental, mental pe- people – I shouldn't say mental retards because people get offended with that, but whatever. I, I, I don't really care. Yeah, people that are mentally retarded or have learning disabilities or whatever the hell you want to call it, okay? I'm not making fun of them, but people like that, even they understand that's bad. They grow up the 29-year-old guy. He's got that, the brains of a two-year-old because he's disabled mentally. And he was screaming, you know, strange man touch, strange man touch. He knows. He knows that that's wrong. And yet you get these men letting their wives and their kids go through. It's just I could go off on this for hours. You guys are you guys are. You guys have been pussified, really. You might as well start wearing G-strings and a bra and walking around in ladies' lingerie. I mean, it's ridiculous. Put on a dress. If you're, if, if you're going to let your wife get felt up by TSA, you might as well go put on a dress. You're a Sally. I'm sorry, but there's got to be a damn line you draw. I know, look, I have friends, and I've consulted with my personal friends and other radio show hosts that I know, and most of them have said the same thing to me. The guys that are married, somebody touch my wife, I'll break his hand. So I know I'm not crazy. I know I'm not alone in this. There comes a time when a man's got to do what a man's got to do. And I see you groping a 95-year-old woman. I See, again, that's why I don't go to the airport, man, because if I saw that happen, I would flip out. I wouldn't be able to control my mouth, and then they would come over and be like, sir, do you have a problem? And that would be it because in my eyes, you're engaging me. And the, the way I play is if you engage me, it's on like Donkey Kong. You know, I have a mouth, and sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes it, uh, it gets a little out of uh, hand. You know, my, my, my mouth tries to – I don't have a filter between my brain and my mouth. It just – flows right out. And sometimes uh, when things like that happen, not sometimes, I know what's going to happen. It's going to escalate the situation. Long story short, you, Popeye will be doing his show from a jail cell on a cell phone or a pay phone. So it's not going to happen. I, I just, I shy away from flying. I drive if I have to travel somewhere. And I used to take the train, but now they've ruined that because now they have all these, you know, uh, Viper teams. And, of course, now, you know, bin Laden died and within eight hours of bin Laden being, quote, unquote, killed, right? Now that they killed the boogeyman, all of a sudden it's, all oh, they want to blow up trains on September 11th. How convenient. That's that corridor right there is one of the most heavily traveled corridor from Boston to New York and from Boston all the way down to D.C. It's the most heavily one of the most heavily traveled train corridors in all of the United States. And that just happens to be where all these threats are being labeled at, right? Well, these terrorists are smart, Popeye. They want to they want to kill us for our freedoms. Well, they shouldn't want to kill us anymore. We don't have any freedom. Al Qaeda and the rest of these schmucks should be, you know, running around doing the Irish jig. Hey, we got them. Woohoo! We screwed the Americans real well. We got their dumbass government and politicians to take away all their freedoms. So Al-Qaeda shouldn't have a problem with us anymore. We don't have freedom. We don't have freedom to do anything in this country anymore. They want to make it a friggin' felony to embed a YouTube video. So Al-Qaeda won. War on terror over. Al-Qaeda Taliban won, huh? Ridiculous. I got to give up my freedom for my security. Really? Really? Last time I checked, everybody that ever did that didn't work out too well for them. Me? I'll keep my liberty. I'll keep my liberty. I'm not worried about giving up my freedoms for security. I don't need somebody to protect me. I can take care of my damn self. 
I know how to use a weapon. I know how to fight hand to hand combat. I can take care of my damn self. I don't need somebody to take care of me. If there's a crime perpetrated against me after I handle business, I'll call you. You can come clean up the mess, do your official business. And that's what that's that's what they're supposed to be for. They're not supposed to come and be heroes and woo 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 jumping out of cars, SWAT team. Get on the ground, man. I just a parking ticket. Get on the goddamn ground. I'll shoot you and your whole damn family. Yeah, and that that's the him spicking out his chewing tobacco. I mean, it's just ridiculous, guys. Come on. It's time to wake up. For any of the feds, cops, or military to hear this broadcast, go check out Oath Keepers, guys. Feel free to email me. Info at federaljack.com. I'm here. I'll be back Friday, guys. 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll see you there.